Welcome to They That Hope with Father Dave and Bob, seeing humor and hope in a crazy world. And I'm Bob. Bob, how's your Lent going? Ah, uh, so yeah, far, yeah, yeah. God so love you. good. God love you. So it must good. Just, it must just be horrible. Oh, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Well, it starts with you. So. God love you. Hang God on. love you. Hey, speaking of suffering, how is uh, baby Grogu doing? Did you hear? Let's just say I've heard chatter, as the intelligence community would refer to it. But it's really disturbing that the first thing you say is, did you hear? What did I? What do I need to hear? What do our listeners need to hear? I feel like our listeners have collectively adopted this beautiful little stuffed animal of baby Yoda. Yoda, hey, first off, also known as Grogu. Hey, first off, he's not little. No, he's, he's, he's quite he's large. Quite large. In fact, I think actually the stuffed animal is larger than... Baby, oh, the, the heck size yes. of the size of Grogu. Yeah. Oh, heck yes! It's yeah. it's Grogu who needs keto or something. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's funny. Myself, it's Grogu who's just let himself go. Okay, yeah, that's you right. know, hanging out of the Jedi Temple. One of been. the evenings we watched uh, a couple of episodes. Uh, let's see, Gro- he's he's spending some time in the friary, kind of getting to know the brothers, uh. which is good. But some people feel like I had him in the library. We had some guests over. He can give kind of a talk to us. And I had him in the library above. The, the library of where? Uh, we have a library in the, in the Friary. Oh, you do? Yeah, we do. We've got oh. a small library. And it's our chapter room where we meet for our meetings and whatnot. And I had him kind of above a fireplace there. And some of the friars thought that maybe that wasn't appropriate. Putting, so, a, putting a stuffed animal, a flammable right, item in front of a fireplace. Right. Well, that would have been fine, except I woke uh, came in the next day and somebody put him in the fireplace. No! Yes. yes. That's Grogu abuse. I know it is. I know it is. Um, Do you so know I, who it was? I think so, but Greg, I'm not going to say. In, no, it was not Gregory. Uh, but well, I, Gregory has more respect for Grogu. I'd like to think. Actually, he was one of the ones that I watched a couple of episodes with, and he had never seen it before. So we're in sep- series two, uh, season two, I think, okay. the second or third episode, and trying to catch him up. Like, I didn't... I, I think he actually called me, I'm supposed did he, to. I was going to say, I didn't have a <laughs> I lot I was of, on retreat this week, but I got I didn't have a that. lot of the background information that I could answer for right. him. And right. I said, Bob Rice is your man. <laughs> so, But let's go back to... Um, so Grogu was in the fireplace. Yeah, you, you so think I took you know who did it? Yeah, so I took him out and dusted oh, you, him off. You're such a hero. I am. Yeah, you know, the hero. Um, but he's he's doing good. He's getting to no, know the guys. He, no, he was just in a fireplace. He's not I mean, anymore. You can't, you can't gloss this over. He's not anymore. There's some friar that's trying to kill him. I've got his back. No, you don't. He woke up and he was in a fireplace. Look, I know you're not used to raising children, but I can tell you as a dad, that's bad. Okay, have any of your kids, never mind, I was going to say ever be in a fireplace, but that's not the right place to go. We're working on it. I think it actually, it's bringing out the sensitive side of some of the friars, but not all of them. But not all, <laughs> but not but not all, all of them. Of them. Yeah, so I'll, I want I'll keep him you, intact. I've got some photos actually, so I can get some photos out. We'll we'll tag it with our right as, it as we always do. Yeah, we yeah. we always follow up on who's all of who's things. been your source. I can't say it's okay. it's just chatter. We've but got a mole in the there, house. There's a mole in the house, and the whole world is watching. Yeah, David, yeah. just let's got you. let's put the pressure on. Got you, got you. Actually, a couple like I said, a couple of us watched a couple episodes of. Um, Mad Delorean. Although you know what, people are now telling me that I need to watch. What is the other one? The the Book of Boba Fett. Book of Boba Fett. Somebody sent me a picture of that guy and said I look like him. Boba Fett. I don't know. I mean, yeah, kind of the old. Yeah, for sure. Sure. That's what they said. Yeah. So. Okay. I, I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. Well, one of the students says I do. So. Oh well, take it the up students are always right. That's the right. students are always right. Um, I was going to say something else. Well, it was a crazy weekend actually because I was here. So it, oh, was, that's right. it was funny. I was supposed to be actually in Dallas. Right. And that uh, storm, let everyone know we've been praying for them, the storm that was down in there. Uh, I was supposed to leave, and I get this text 45 minutes before I was leaving that my flight to Dallas was, cance- was canceled. We already had somebody down there. He got stuck there for 50 hours. He couldn't get out. Oh, was that it, Bob? Yeah. And yeah. he was going to rent a car, but he couldn't rent any cars because there were no cars to be had. Yikes. So he had somebody actually who lives there drive him to Houston so he could get a flight. It was, it was nuts. <laughs> That's uh, horrible. One of our people was stuck in Newark. Thank the Lord I didn't get out. But it yeah, was weird because yeah. I had basically two days here without anything on my calendar. That's fantastic. It was glorious. I bet. Glorious. <laughs> yes. It really was. I just got so many... 
details, little things that just took an hour here, an hour there that have been. Right. Yeah, so just, it was great. That kind of pile up. It was up. great. Yeah. It was yeah, good. it's always nice when you just get those chunks of time. It's just a gift. You don't think you have them and then. And you were in St. Louis? Amazing. I was, and thankfully I didn't have and any. And what did you discover there? I didn't have any travel issues. What did I discover in St. Louis? Yeah, in one of the meetings you realized you were. Irish? The. Oldest person in the room. Thanks for bringing that <laughs> sure. up. <laughs> sure. But it was. I had a wonderful weekend uh, out in St. Louis. I was uh, doing a retreat for the youth ministers there. About 30 or 40 showed up. It was one of their first post-COVID times of everybody oh, that's cool. getting together. That's always cool to be a part of It was of this. joyful. It was yeah. fun. But I did have a moment where, I, you know, particularly when the priest shared that he had just been ordained for a couple of years and he's 29. Yeah. And I looked around the room and I went, Oh man, I am the oldest person in this room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of a. It's. I don't. I'm not like upset by it. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. But it's very unusual. You know, when I when I first got involved in the conferences, especially, I was the youngest person in the room. Sure, I was sure. 22, and everybody else was, well, as old as you were actually, because there's kind of like a whole generation of yep. folks your age yep. that was doing things, and I was like the tag along kid, you know, that was about six or seven years younger. And uh, now that's starting to change. You no, know, it's funny. I remember when the students started, you know, starting to say, oh, you know, you're my parents' age. Yeah. It's like, first off, who asked you? Right. You know, <laughs> nobody really asked. Yeah, when are my parents' age? Um, but there is actually, there's something that's really sweet about about that. And, and it's funny, when I was a younger friar and I would look at, at Father Mike and, and right. some of the people, I'd be at conferences and I was the youngest, I was the youngest friar ordained in the friar for I don't know how long, but... And then I'd go to these events that Father Mike would just tag me along with him. And I, I would look at he and these relationships with people that he's had for decades. And now people look at us like that. I know. It's like they'll walk, they'll walk into a conference and it's like, oh, you know, Father Dave and Bob have been doing this for 25 years. Right. You know? Yeah, I had somebody, this happens, you know, when they ask me, like, so when did you start doing the summer conferences? And I said, well, 94. And somebody's like, I was born in 96. <laughs> and again, one of, the, and one of the youth ministers. The appropriate response is, yeah, did who, asked yeah. You, who here asked you? <laughs> I didn't when realize you were born? that, but that's yeah. that they're 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 very eager to share. Yes, they are. Such yes, things. they are. Yes, and, they are. Uh, it's wonderful, but it yeah, there's a blessing of that, and the the weekend itself was very restful. Was uh, there a theme? And wonderful. Um, I actually just tried to talk. I just picked out different talks for different scriptures, and it, a lot of it was about um, making sure that our ministry doesn't get in the way of our spirituality. Nice. And uh, just a lot of things about prayer and quiet and. Uh, you know, I, I think there's there's generally like a feeling of everybody still recovering, mm. you know, not just from COVID, but I know folks in ministry, so many people lost their jobs or their jobs were shelved for a bit. Sure. They're, they're trying to re-kick off ministry things with young people. It feels like they just are starting over in some ways. And so, um, you know, I think a lot of it is just trying to stay at peace and be with the Lord. One of the quotes I love of St. Francis says, uh, do not work. Do not let work extinguish the spirit of holy prayer. Hmm. And it's just something I have it on my wall in my room, and it's just something, a good reminder, especially when you're involved in ministry, because there is a way that you can make, quote, unquote, your ministry, your prayer, yeah. or and uh, your work, your prayer, and that's, yeah, that's a That's danger. a danger, yeah. and I think it's an easy trap to fall into. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Exactly. Um, no football, so we can't talk football. No. Nope. Baseball. Baseball. Yeah, baseball is... It's not uh, as cool when you're here. It's yeah, it's you're People right. listening yeah, are like, yeah, yeah. why what did he just that? say that again? Okay, but the, the, actually they had placed today as the date that if the lockout didn't today get settled... Today is Monday, even today, though we just yeah. pretended it was Ash Wednesday we did, earlier. We did. That's all right. I'm getting good at that whole thing, though. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it was, if, it, if it wasn't settled, they said that the opening day would be delayed, so we're now being prepared for that. Honestly, if if they strike for very long, it will be very bad for baseball. Because baseball's already struggled a little bit with particularly with the younger population. Well, because COVID it, COVID was problematic can for Can I it. say the problem with baseball? There is no problem with no, baseball. There no, there is a problem with baseball. Problem there with is baseball. a problem with baseball. Well, first of all, this impending strike is a problem with baseball. That's a that's a problem with the labor development of baseball. Here's the word. Uh-huh. Analytics. Agree with me. I won't agree with you. Why not? Why what what are you talking about? Analytics. Analytics has ruined the game. And I say this. As Quoting somebody who Tony, saw beanball. Tony Kornheiser said that, yeah, yeah. and I thought, oh, I'm going to say that to Dave and hope that you would. this would resonate with you. I'm trying. I'm trying okay, to talk to you on a place that. I appreciate that. that you care about. I do, but I don't, I don't agree with that. There are some aspects of analytics that have, been, that have been negative, but it's also been some positive things about it. But it is not, it, that is not the problem <laughs> with baseball. Well, baseball, 
intrinsically has its own issues, I would say. But I don't even want to go. Analytics is like slowing down the game, apparently. You have no idea. What I have no idea what I'm saying. So I have no idea what I'm we, talking we, we about. We were talking about this before we got started. <laughs> we, we won't. We don't need to get into what we we're talking about. But I said, let's just have let's make sure that people don't think we're dumb. And he goes, "All right, this is the 79th episode, and this is the first time we said, you know, maybe we should make. Maybe sure. we should be worried about what people think. Yeah, us. yeah. So it is. <laughs> it, that's ridiculous. Rep. Okay, but we're w- hockey's doing great. Hockey's doing great. Uh, penguins are are. Are strong and looking playoff bound. That's always exciting. As are the Tampa Bay Lightning. Just a heads up. End of the month, we're going to be in Cleveland. We're going to have mass. I think maybe at the Cathedral. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. And then a little bit of a social hour, and then a Cabs game. So yeah, is that open? That's open to anyone or just that is that is absolutely open open to anybody. So you can go on Franciscan and find it. But uh, yeah, it's it's an alumni event. But I don't think we're ever that'd be great. That'd be great if people want to join us. That'd be wonderful. We're gonna have a great time. Um, and so this was an interesting thing, and I know that you follow golf fairly closely. I'm, right? I'm avid. So there's a PGA Tour, which is the main tour, but the Saudis are trying uh, to cre- try to create their own tour, and they're using a lot of money. They're okay. like, they're just, I mean, just massive amounts of money coming right. to play on our tour. So Phil Mickelson. So like, like a competition. Yeah, exactly, PGA. exactly. Okay. Trying to pull away PGA players. And Phil Mickelson has been one of the kind of, he's been one of the top five golfers. Yeah, he's awesome. You know, yeah. So... He went off and said, he goes, you know, the human rights issues in Saudi Arabia are horrible. They treat people horrible. He uses some language that I'm certainly not going to use and make some specific references that I'm also not going to use. But he just goes through this big thing about how bad, all right, the Saudi government is. And then he said, now one might consider why I would even consider it. And then he goes on to say, because the money's so good. They're going <laughs> to offer me so much money. <laughs> well, people are going nuts. Because he, in one sense, he was being honest, but he called it out that that's absolutely the only yes. reason people would do this was because they give the government's money, they give countries money, and, yes. and, and you just kind of ignore everything else that goes along with it. So let's just say all of his sponsors are dropping him. He's... <laughs> Phil Mickelson, he said he's taking a little bit of some quiet time. Yeah, so. that's it. Yeah, it's some time away from the that's game right. to reflect and uh, and try to come back. Yeah, that is kind of a, a crazy dynamic just in sports. Well, isn't you the know, World Cup was a yeah, big thing? Yeah, it's, it still is a big thing. It's supposed to be in Qatar yeah. uh, in this December. But um, what they, A, everybody acknowledges that they bribed their way into mm-hmm. FIFA um, you know, all, massive amounts of money, massive amounts of money, even though like we've acknowledged that we're still letting it happen because right. they're still paying massive amounts of money. And then there's been human rights abuses all over the place as they've been building stadiums. Right. They've had to reschedule because for most of the world, soccer starts in August and goes till May. Well, you can't do a World Cup in Qatar in the summer without people's faces melting off. So they're doing it in December, changing everything. I mean, it re- it's. There's no point to it. I and mean, apparently you're not supposed to be able to drink. And they said you can't have a World Cup. So apparently they're <laughs> going to allow. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's sad. The It's sad when people just immediately drop their values. Yep. I mean, you know, I was at the All-Star game, which was great. And b- before I went into the All-Star game, they were talking about you have to wear masks everywhere. But then the Super Bowl happened. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And suddenly, conveniently, the folks in California, of all places, were like, I you know, we don't really need the masks today. You yeah. know? And that was partly because the NFL said, we might move it to Houston if we don't get better, you know, response here. So it's, well, this, sadly, it's, it's interesting. It's kind I just of a saw yesterday, kind of the, uh, the State of the Union is tonight, uh, Wednesday night. Okay. Um, is it really? It is, which is, yeah, that should be an interesting speech. Yeah. Yeah, given, yeah. given that things are not going so well. Here, well, here, before we get to that, let's do our promo, and then we can, oh, okay, we can segue okay. into Okay, that. okay, good. the wrong button that was supposed to be at the end of it but it was worth listening to wasn't it it was so beautiful those are our students singing Mm, by the way they are beautiful and they're in our they're in the studio right now if you're watching on video this is always done live i want them to watch the video oh okay i pose this oh is that me yeah yeah you read it no it's right here okay and it's so well written i don't have my glasses though okay i pose this question to you to me what would you say if you could write a letter to your younger self, mm. so you, but the you of 10 or 20 years ago? 
That's the basis of the new eight-part video series that I co-host with Emily Stimson Chapman, the author of Letters to Myself from the End of the World. Join for our sometimes lighthearted, sometimes profound conversations about Catholic theology, food, parenting, biblical wisdom, last things, basically how to pursue holiness in a world broken by sin. You can watch all eight episodes at no cost, Bob. Not a penny. What? Not one penny. Not one no penny. Cost. Tell me more, Father okay, Dave. Okay, just search YouTube for Franciscan Letters to Myself. Um, talk with Bob about letters to myself. <laughs> Actually, it, it was... I don't, have you oh, seen oh, any of it? Okay. Let the, let the, don't interrupt the students. Franciscan University. I tell you, yada, yada, yada. Com. Okay, so... Uh, we, Thank you, students. Have a good day. Okay, we can talk to Leave about, quietly, about please. that. The alma mater. Okay, first off, it really is beautiful. The, the series that Emily and I did, we did it in her home, and we just talk about things that matter. How did this happen? Well, she wrote the book, right. Letters to Myself. And, and Emily's a wonderful author. Emily writes a lot for our she's, magazine. She's, she's, kinda, just, she's been involved. She just in takes the, care of us so well. Yeah, so she's, well. she's fantastic. So, uh, she wrote the book. I read the book. We did a ser- uh, show on University Presents on ADMTN, okay. and I said we could do more of this. Yeah. I mean, there was just the themes that she's talking about, and it's just interesting the way that she did it. In essence, it's I wished I would have known. You know, I wished. Mm. So, yeah, we, we break it up into eight, eight chapters, yeah. uh, dealing with all kinds of things. Just, again— Real life experiences. What is it? Uh, if you know Emily's story, Emily and her husband were not able to have children. Um, and that's just a real suffering and yeah. difficulty in that. And then they ended up adopting three kids in about three and a half years, three wow. babies. Okay. So just what that's been like for her. So that's one of the topics. Um, yeah, politics, uh, faith, uh, sin, joy, suffering, Wow, sorrow. It's, it's really beautiful. It's yeah. re- so it's... And it turned out beautiful. 4 p.m. Media that did Wild Goose oh, with me. Oh, great. They did the, the, uh, the, the production, it. and it's just fantastic. Yeah, they're always outstanding. So that's great. So okay, you can find yeah. that on, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, just YouTube, Franciscan um, University. Yeah, the Franciscan yeah. University channel. It's called Letters to Myself. You can actually also at the Wild Goose is loose at my website as well. You can get it there. Is that wildgoose.tv? Uh, yeah, there too. Okay, yep. that's the app. Yep, that's yep. So okay. either way, that's great. Okay, so I'm at a uh, lacrosse game on Saturday. Okay. Which was great. Uh, the the women they had played a really good game. They didn't win. They just lost by a couple, uh, couple goals, but it was great. But a bunch of students came up to me and they said, "You know, Father Dave, do we have a um, uh, song for the university that we could sing at the games?" And oh. I said, "Well, yeah, we've got an alma mater song, but I don't think it's not really a fight song. I don't think this is the fight song." Right. So. Um, I invited them to think about writing one. Oh, great. So if somebody reaches out to you, help them out. <laughs> Why would they reach out to me? Because you did the other one. You reworked the other one, didn't you? I, a, I did. A, a, yeah. So No, I did. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, dramatically. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So do a fight song. Cheer, cheer for old Francis. <laughs> Wake up the echoes. <laughs> no? Has that been done? Well, we could find something. We could. I could... Well, if you ask the students, I don't want to take the joy from them. Okay. Well, let's see what they come up with, and then we'll talk. <laughs> and then we'll see if we can do a fight song. We would actually – it'd be fun to have a fight song um, now that we've got so many wonderful sporting things going well, on. Well, one thing I was saying is that what some of the groups do is like in uh, Boston, they do Sweet Caroline. Wah, wah, wah. So it's yeah. not a fight not, song. Not, a, not even close to a fight no, song. No, but it's, it's something that unites them. I think they do it before like the sixth inning, seventh inning, right. or something like that. I went to a Wisconsin football game. I forget what the song. They just go nuts at the beginning of the fourth quarter. So we could adopt a song that everybody right. just goes crazy. But Maybe something from Brother, Son, and Sister Moon. Mm, that's possible. Yeah. Okay, Bob. Um, so as I was saying before, <laughs> I was so rudely interrupted. But the whole thing, obviously, I was going to say, have you been following? How can you not follow what's going on in the Ukraine? Right. And uh, it, it kind of became, I, I don't know, personal, but... We have a professor in Gaming, and his wife is from Ukraine. And it's just, I mean, some of the images yeah. have just been, did you see the couple that, that wanted to get married before? No. So it was really beautiful. It was just, it looked like, honestly, they were in a rectory that he was going off to fight and they wanted to get married before. It's, it's a wow. common theme, you know, but just, you, you know, one of the things that when I was in Europe, living in Europe, that became really evident is, First off, to study Europe is to study the history of war. Mm-hmm. But it's it's been there. You know, rarely is the war come to us, right? right? Depending on where you lived. Obviously, in Hawaii, it was a little bit different, or Guam or something like that. But 
I don't know. It's just it's just kind of one thing after another, and and you see the images, and you just feel so helpless. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, that's that's <clears throat> my emotion with it. Obviously, uh, praying, fasting. I thought it was very beautiful that um, you know when the fighting started. Uh, you know, there was a holy hour yeah, that yeah, was yeah, yeah. you know fit. You know, the chapel was packed, was packed the and they just canceled things, and you know, students. Do you really follow what the up. Holy Father did? No, what happened? Like it was interesting. He called did he call or did he go to or somebody should look into that um had a conversation with the russian embassy in in uh, italy and rome which is totally you just don't you're not supposed to do that and right. he went to them and said you know what's going on this is this has got to stop and then he actually took a phone call from the president of ukraine and and just said that you know that we're praying for you and yeah there there is a there is a sense of solidarity i think that though in fact today wednesday the holy father has asked for day of prayer and fasting for the situation in Ukraine. But I remember when I was in, in, in Gomming, we had uh, Otto Habsburg, who had, you know, the Habsburg dynasty not fallen would be the emperor. He came and he talked about Putin, that he had written a book that was against anti-Putin. And he said, this Russian, these two Russian guys come in. It was in, I believe in France is where the publisher was, but I could be mistaken. Could have been Spain, but I think it was France. And they literally bought the publishing company and canceled that book so that there would be nothing written about Putin. And he said, he, he said it was actually when he started speaking out against Putin, the first, I, I was able to have dinner with him a couple of times, and the first time he came, it was just he and his driver. The second, third time, he had security with him. Wow. And he said, Putin is a weak person. He's a weak man. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, he's just talking about, he's, he said that. Like insecure. Yeah, inse yeah. insecure and and other things a narcissist but he said he's always a KGB person you know that's the type of person he is and yeah. and it was interesting too even even Romney when Romney had the debate with yeah with, with, yeah with when, he, when they Obama. said what's the greatest thing he said you know Russia. Russia and he goes oh the 80s is asking for their foreign policy back and I mean he's he, he was right so it, it's just a mess and you're right especially this is they were saying this is the first war that's gonna be played out on social media yes you know and the images and the, it's just you do feel helpless and yeah. yeah and you know i mean i'm not i'm not a fan of let's go in and fight you know but you just hear oh here's economic sanctions economic sanctions and then they're like well it's going to take a while for them to feel the economic sanctions and, and you just you feel like isn't there anything more the world community could do to this is interesting though help? because I don't, it, I don't it's, know. it's interesting though Facebook, or Facebook isn't Facebook anymore. It's what, Meta? I think it's still Facebook. Meta or Google. They've all blocked Russia. Okay. And and they're blocking, some of the major social media companies are blocking Russia. And the some of the finance stuff is blocking. So it will be interesting in this digital age, once the people of Russia begin to feel this, what, yeah. what that would look like. But they're they, already, I mean, they're already taking the streets. I mean, you're yeah, seeing yeah, huge which is protests. Which is apparently unusual. That, right. That that's not something that you usually it's see. It's hugely unusual. But yeah, the question is, so are we going to, I mean, I don't, I don't think that Putin is really going to be bothered by these sanctions or other things, but I guess you're just trying to bother people around Putin to bother uh, Putin. Enough pressure. I mean, is that, well, is actually, that kind of the idea? Yeah, I think so. The NHL threw out the idea of not letting Russians play. I, I don't know that that's yeah. the, I don't know that that's the answer, but there has to be pressure. And yeah, I mean, you can't necessarily punish the run, Russian people for a leader that they don't really like anyway. I mean, I mean, it's so complicated. Yeah, you know, I don't I that. don't know what their feeling is about him. Yeah, Ovechkin came. Your your capitals guy yeah, yeah, came yeah. out against him. Yeah, came out against, or at least came out against the war, against the fighting. Um, it's just again it, the the images of it. Yeah. The the women and children that are leaving, everybody like eighteen to sixty, they're they're asking to stay and fight. It's yeah. just they're handing out guns. Yeah. So today is a day, if you're listening on the day this is released, Ash Wednesday, as the Pope is asked in a special way, obviously we're doing a day of prayer and fasting. But um yeah, really with that intention for those in the Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh it's a sad and tragic thing. And and like you said, you feel helpless, but we're not helpless. I mean, the, the, I really do, and, and you do as well. There is a power in prayer, and there is a power in sacrifice, and, and we may not know exactly what that's doing, but I think for us to be a part of it, that feeling that we want to do something, I think yeah. that's something that's important for us to do. Yeah, amen. Well, as we are now in the season of Lent, uh, one of the things we had been talking about is closing out each of our Lenten episodes uh, with a reflection. We've got seven weeks of Lent, and there happen to be seven virtues 
And so we thought it might be nice if we might connect uh, each week of Lent to growth in a particular virtue. You know, it's in, uh, kind of how this has come about is, is on campus this year, our theme has been, unless the Lord builds the house. And I just found myself, you know, the labor builds, builds in vain. I found myself thinking about that and just more specifically of what does it look like to build a house, right? And there has to be, first off, it takes a while to build a house. Yeah. It's not something that's done overnight. There's planning ahead of time. There's preparation of the ground. We're going to see all of that on, you know, on, <laughs> our, on our campus, campus over the next, next yeah, yeah right. for the next couple of years. But so, so that, that laying of a foundation and then building upon that. And, and I just found myself thinking and praying a little bit about that. What does that look like? And then I had an encounter with, with a faculty member, which was just really delightful. And we were talking, and, and he was, he's a Thomist and talking about yeah, just But we philosophy. still love him. Yeah, we do. But one of the things that he said <laughs> that was really good was um, he said, uh, one of the things that, like, that bugs me is Franciscans are stubbornly integrated. Mm. And that was, I really, I really love that, the, the fact that, that the spiritual life needs to be integrated in our day-to-day life, that, that this ability to compartmentalize, and this is my faith, and this is my life, and never shall the two meet is just, that's just not. The, right. the nature of the incarnation is exactly the opposite of that, that, that God uh, integrates himself in, in our life, in our day-to-day life. <clears throat> so I was reflecting that, that whatever we do should, with Lent should help integrate us. It should have some connection to our life. And I came to the thought that, well, maybe the, the virtues would help us to be able to do that. Um, I should have worn my glasses, but I didn't. Um, but the, the, the virtues— Why don't you just start wearing glasses all the time? Why don't you just live your life and let me live my life? Why don't you let baby Grogo out of the friary? Wow, that didn't take us long to no, go there. That escalated quickly. It did. But the, the catechism reminds us that the, the virtues help us to build habits of holy living. Um, and, and, the, and that they can actually, the virtues, not the, the theological virtues, but the cardinal virtues help us. We can actually make a decision to work on the virtues and we can actually grow in the virtues. Might be so, worth distinguishing the, between, you mentioned these fancy these fancy Theologicals phrases. are faith, hope, and love, and we'll do those at the end. And those are infused. Those, are, those come about through grace. They come about through prayer, and mm-hmm. we'll talk a little bit more about those. But the, the uh, cardinal virtues, uh, they can be an act of the will, that I can right. make a decision. So the, so the one that we're going to talk a little bit about today is— Does is, cardinal mean flesh? Is that right? Is that the root word of it? Yeah, I don't know. I think, <laughs> once again, <laughs> why, do, why do we worry about how we look now? Um, it's something to do with that. Well, like— Cardinal sins, cardinal virtues. Um, I think those are like it's something of humanity. I okay, think. but, w- <laughs> but I was, okay. Well, I was I was gonna go and share just like um, if we think of some of the uh, best movies. I don't know that may not be fair, but some of the movies that there, there's a common theme in lots of movies, and that is oh, an indi- I found the definition okay, of okay. it. A New World songbird of the bunting family with a stout bill and typically a cons- conspicuous crest. Okay, so those virtues. Were those, these are the virtues that we're focusing on. But um, the, a common theme is an individual is facing a struggle and they they continue to fight and they continue. So Rudy, probably the best. Would you agree that Rudy is the finest movie ever created? Come on, dude. It's Field of Dreams. Okay, Phil, Phil, baseball. baseball. Okay, Field of Dreams is to go to. Okay, but I mean, some of these movies, Apollo thirteen, uh, that's, great that's movie, a great movie, great movie. Um, but then, uh, so many of the stories of our saints, Maximilian Colby. Mm. So I mean, he's no Rudy, but yeah, 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 yeah. Like the, the second greatest story ever told. But anyway, <laughs> uh, the the life is difficult, and the spiritual life is difficult, and what the the virtue of fortitude allows us to do is allows us to continue to press on. Mm. I love in the scriptures it says, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, pick up your cross. And I think it's either in Mark or in Luke. They don't both. One of them says daily. Daily. Yeah, I think it's daily. Luke. Luke's. And, and, and this isn't possible without the virtue of fortitude. Mm. Um, so oftentimes I think that it, we look at our own life and there are things that, that we sense we should do or we know we should do and we just can't stick to it. And, and fortitude is that virtue that grace that allows us to recognize what needs to be done and to be able to pursue it in when times are difficult. Uh, and, and it seems to me Lent is is the pinnacle season that allows us to be able to do that, to be able to recognize what, what Christ has done for us. You know, I, I the, the thing that I, I was found myself reflecting on is that ultimately we're, we're going to lead, Lent is going to lead us to Good Friday. And that's a journey that we take. But 
Jesus didn't, the first time he denied himself or the first time that he acted courageously wasn't the, wasn't the cross. I mean, that he had lived a life of that. And because of a lot of those small choices and small decisions, some of which he didn't, want, I'm sure he didn't want to do. I mean, on, yeah. on a human level, didn't want to do that. But he made the decision that it's important that I do this. It's important that I follow through with this. Um, and, and prayed for the grace and the courage to be able to do that. He built up the virtue of fortitude, that he could continue to press on, that he could continue to go on, even when things were difficult, that ultimately leads him to the cross. Well, I think that Lent provides us an opportunity to make lots of small decisions, yeah. you know, to, to continue to press on, to continue to have fortitude, to continue to do the things that need to be, do, to be, do, to be done. But, like, for me, that's honestly, sometimes that's my emails. Mm. It's, it's just this, this stick to itness, this decision that, okay, I've got some things that need to be done. I would rather do something else, yeah. but I'm going to continue. Now, it, it may be like, really, for, you're going to compare answering your, your emails to Jesus dying on the cross? No. What I'm going to compare it to is making decisions to do uh, things that I may not necessarily want to do, but I know that it's important that I do it. Yeah. And, and, bring, and, and by that act of the will— Hopefully, down the road, when, when things are more difficult, then I have the fortitude, that virtue, to continue to press on when things are difficult. One of the things I love um, in terms of virtue is the idea that virtue is like our, our spiritual muscles and that you can, you can grow stronger with them over time, especially as we're talking about these cardinal virtues. Um, and, and I love that analogy because even, I think, Father Dave, what you're saying is sometimes— we want to think of these virtues being expressed in the most extreme way, you know, like fortitude is standing up to a, you know, horde of enemies right, and right. just running headlong into battle. Um, but it could be something as simple as um, committing, you know, following through on a task that you know you need to do that you don't want to do mm -hmm. or, you know, holding your tongue. Right. <laughs> you, I mean, know? Or, or, yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot like, like many things in our muscles, it's a lot of the little things that we do, and you can, you can intentionally work them out to grow stronger. I, I think that's the beauty about a season like Lent. It's, you know, we're not just fasting or doing these things just for the heck of it. Like the idea, you know, I, I actually found when I was a young man, somebody recommended, you know, like many young men struggling, you know, with lust. And um, one time a, a priest, I was so glad he said this. He said, you know, you should start fasting. And I said, oh, you mean like as kind of a penance? And he said, well, he said, yes, as a penance, but also if you can start learning to control yourself with just the foods you eat, you'll be able to be controlling yourself in, in bigger things sure. as well. And it was like a shocking statement, like, wait, what? You no, know, and that's, exact, that's absolutely right. When I try to give conf uh, penances, I try to make a penance that helps them in their area of struggle. So, yeah. you know, to be able to tell the flesh no to food one can also tell themselves no to lust. And it's, yeah. like you said, it's, that's one of the, the distinctions between the cardinal and theological virtues is the cardinal virtues, by practicing them, yes. we become stronger in them. The, yeah. I, I found the uh, catechism references, I believe, 1833. Okay. Yeah, 1833, if you want to take a look at the catechism, it talks about that our ability to grow in, the car in virtue and the cardinal virtues by this act of the will, by yeah. this choice and this decision. Like, some of them could be, you said hold your tongue. Some of it could actually be having a conversation. Mm. You know, having that conversation with somebody that you know you need to. It's you know, it's gonna be difficult, it's gonna be awkward, but making small steps now. And the reason it allows it to do this is there are gonna be times and experiences and occasions in our life that's gonna ask I put in quotes, something greater, right? Yeah. Something bigger. Maximilian Kolbe didn't di start dying to himself when he was in Auschwitz. Mm. But he, he developed that grace of fortitude and, and, and being able to continue to press on throughout his life that ultimately led him to be able to do that, what he was able to do. So l little things like that, to take some time and, and reflect on what are small things that you could do that could help build up the virtue of fortitude. Yeah, amen. How might you s say the difference between fortitude and courage? Because sometimes uh, I've heard it called yeah, courage. Yeah, I, think but courage I, I think courage is a part of fortitude. Yeah. You know, some things, some things that, that the Lord is inviting us to maybe require more courageous actions on, yeah. our, on our part. And some of them are just this stick to it. Like an, this, an, yeah, endurance. Yeah, an endurance. Right. Yeah. So they go to, when, when I was just praying through and reading some of it, that, that you see these not necessarily always interchangeable, but there's a connection between the two. Well, and I think that's why I wanted to ask it, because I think, you, you know, when you talk, if sometimes people, I've heard them like summarize fortitude, it's like being courageous. But 
in some of those things that you discussed, there's not a lot of courage to, mm-hmm. you know, do the daily task at hand or something you don't want to do. But I would agree. I think it's actually more than just overcoming a fear mm-hmm. that we want to acknowledge that many of the reasons why we have difficulty enduring through things is because we're afraid. Right, right. Know, it's it, a part it, of it, right. It, it certainly is a part of it. So, Amen. So as you uh, continue, as you begin your day of fasting uh, for the Ukraine, and certainly as you head into a season of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, um, think about maybe ways that uh, this could be a season of strengthening those spiritual muscles, uh, you know, just by repetition. Think, Mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to help you think about things that you can do in this season. I know we just started, but it's never too late to think of something that you might be able to do. It's never too early. And it's never too early uh, regarding uh, these virtues, particularly today's virtue of fortitude. Fortitude. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we begin our time of Lent, that we ask your Holy Spirit and your grace to be present to us. Ultimately, Jesus, we want to be more like you. We want to love like you. We want to be merciful like you. We want to be kind like you. We want to live in the truth and speak the truth like you. Um, Ultimately, God, we want to be transformed uh, each day during the season of Lent. I ask your blessing and your peace and your grace to be upon our brothers and sisters that are sharing this time with us. Let them know your love. Draw them closer to your heart, closer to your presence. Jesus, give us the grace of fortitude that we can continue to persevere in relationship with you and in loving our brothers and sisters. May the Lord bless us this Lent, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Dave. Sure, God bless you, Bob. And thank you, everybody. Uh, we are praying for you. Please keep praying for us. We're all praying for the Ukraine. If you have any stories of hopes or prayer requests, we'd love to hear them. Hope at franciscan.edu. Hope at franciscan.edu.